This tutorial is for educational use only. It is not authorized nor approved for any other use. Money. The reason why we wake up every single day and work hard to earn that piece of paper. But it's more than just a piece of paper. It is that piece of paper that is allowing us to make transactions. It is the piece of paper that allows to do commerce between countries. It allows me to buy groceries. It allows me to pretty much do most of the things that we need to do every day. Here's the thing. Blockchain came as a revolution to the financial industry. It's going to allow us to transact way more faster than what we usually do with traditional banking systems or traditional finance institutions, which means that now I'm going to be removing a lot of the management overhead of my money, of my asset. But it's more than just a piece of paper. Money is the guarantee that I'm going to give you the value of the product or the transaction or the work that you are offering. Okay. So basically I am telling you, you're charging me hundred dollars for something, right? When you charge me a hundred dollars, I am going to give you a note basically that piece of paper that says it's worth a hundred. Okay. But what it's giving its value, a lot of things. We have a fractional reserve banking system and which allows the bank industry to transact with money that not necessarily it's held in a vault. Okay. And that allows a lot of flexibility, but has consequences, right? The consequences is problem with liquidity. If we don't have liquidity to provide the depositor, their money if they are asking for it if we don't have that liquidity we're going to have a major problem because we're not going to satisfy the transaction liquidity we're not going to be able to pay or provide that liquidity that was given to us by that depositor okay when we start transitioning from financial institutions into the blockchain there needs to be a medium of exchange in order for us to inject liquidity and enable transactions with other crypto tokens or crypto assets let's say i want to buy ethereum right we want to buy ethereum and i need to provide something in exchange for that token Right? I need to provide something that is the equivalent of the price of Ethereum at that time, which means that as of now, Ethereum is on the $2,000 range. I know it's, it's awesome, right? And we are in April, 2023, four or five years from now, we watched this video, God knows what will be the price of Ethereum, okay? But to summarize, I need to be able to pay in order for me to exchange that token with another token. I want to buy Ethereum. I am going to be providing the market value of that token in the currency that is allowed to be transacted. And this is stablecoin. When we start talking about stablecoins, we are usually referring to a token that is associated or is pegged to another token. It is a token that is a one-to-one -one. when we talk about collateralized stable coins. It's usually a token that is backed by the value of another token or another currency. If we take the example of USDT and USDC, those are well-known stable coins. They have a collateral that backs the value of that virtual token or the virtual coin, or in this case, the cryptocurrency, okay? So I need to have something stored somewhere that tells the holder of that token, or in this case of that cryptocurrency, that is worth $1 or that is worth 1.00 USD. Here's where it gets interesting. How do we know that that token is worth 1.00 USD? That is a great question. There must be a mechanism that allows me to tell the value of that token onto the blockchain. And that is called proof of reserve. With proof of reserve, I have a mean of communication that allows me to tell from outside of the blockchain, better known as off-chain, onto the blockchain, which is on-chain, okay? So I need to be able to grab the information that tells that I have the collateral, I have the guarantee that I have 
the money or the liquidity available to pay the value of that token, which means that I have to hold in custody dollars. In this case, if we are doing a stable coin based on US dollars, I need to hold in a vault somewhere those dollars. And if I say I want to mint, if you don't know the term mint, if this is your first time on the channel, first of all, welcome. I am going to tell you when we mint, we are generating new tokens on the blockchain in the case of cryptocurrencies. When we mint outside of the blockchain, we are creating fiat currency, which is the paper money that we know. Okay. So when we do that, we are creating new circulating currency, new paper. In order for me to mint a thousand tokens, I need to be able to tell the market that I am going to guarantee the value of that token because I have a vault with the equivalent, a one-to-one -one peg of the cryptocurrency to the physical dollar, or in this case, the physical USD in the case of dollars. Okay. So what they're doing, USDT and USDC, they need to have a vault with the equivalent of the cryptocurrency supply in real cash or real assets or real currency. Proof of reserve. With proof of reserve, I can bridge the communication between the outside financial institutions onto the blockchain. And I can dictate the price according to the fair market value or the market price. If someone wants to exchange that cryptocurrency against another cryptocurrency, I should be able to dictate how much it's worth so that I can give the exchange rate of that transaction. Same goes with when you travel to another country. If you want to exchange dollars for dirhams, I need to know how much am I going to give you in dirhams on exchange for the dollar that you are providing me, right? So I need to have proof of reserve. So with proof of reserve, we are doing that bridge between the physical paper money from the financial institutions onto the blockchain. And that proof of reserve gets attached to the smart contract that is the token smart contract. So let's take the example of USDC. We have a smart contract that is dictated on the blockchain that is immutable, that tells the entire blockchain, I have X amount of tokens minted because on the smart contracts, it's where we mint the supply. It's where we create those tokens, right? If I want to give the value of one USDC against one US dollar, I need to have a one-to-one -one collateral to back the value. Proof of reserve, what it's going to do? It's going to talk to financial institutions. Financial institutions is going to be providing that real-time vault balance in the proof of reserve protocol. Then that proof of reserve protocol, it's going to send that data inside the blockchain and all the feeds that are constantly looking in real time and making sure that the price is the same price or if there's any fluctuation, they're gonna be listening. I am going to be listening and I'm going to be making sure that there's no changes on the vault because the moment the vault lowers its supply or let's say the vault loses asset or liquidity, the stable coin ratio to the physical value in the vault needs to be recalculated. If we don't burn tokens, the value of the digital token or the cryptocurrency has to go down because we have more tokens than actual physical currency backing the value of that token. We also have the case of commodity-based stablecoin. And when we talk about commodity-based stablecoin, we are pegging to gold. We are pegging to silver. We are pegging to precious metals or anything that is a store of value that could also be stored in a vault and provide liquidity against the token. So it's not just currency. It's also pegging a store of value. Okay. Let's take, for example, gold. So gold right now, April 2023 is $2,000 approximately an ounce, which means that I can do the following. I can build a smart contract that it's going to issue tokens that are collateralized against gold that I have stored in a vault. We said that the value of gold is $2,000 an ounce. Okay. As of April, 2023, the value of gold is $2,000 an ounce. Okay. 
So let's say I do the following. I'm going to create my own stable coin that is backed by gold, right? I have not one ounce. I got two ounces, three ounces, four ounces, five ounces, six ounces, seven ounces, eight ounces, nine ounces, a total of 10 ounces of gold. And I want to create a stable coin with a supply of 20,000 coin. Okay. How much gold do I need to have in order for me to back the value? If we have 20,000, every ounce of gold, I got 2000 coins. At the current market price, I need to have 10 ounces of gold to generate 20,000 tokens at one USD or one US dollar. So every single token that I mint that is backed by gold is going to be worth one USD or one dollar. But here's the thing. Here's the problem with that. You can do it. I'm not saying that you cannot do it, but here's the catch. If the price of gold goes down, then the value is no longer $1, which means that you need to find a way to establish the peg. And this is where we talk about maintaining and losing the peg. We maintain the peg by providing extra assets to back the collateral so then we can raise the value and maintain that peg status, maintain that value of one. But we are not holding dollars, we are holding gold, which means that it could be more volatile. It could go up and down and we have no control of that. And this is when we start talking about fractionized stable coins, which means that I will be not only backing it with one asset, but two or even three. And as we start adding more assets onto the collateral, then the math becomes a little bit more harder to maintain that equilibrium. The algorithm, and this is where we start discussing algorithm stable coins, they're not backed on a one-to-one -one basis. They're backed by assets. Price is constantly changing. There is a mechanism that allows me to burn tokens in case the price has went down and I don't have sufficient collateral to back my supply, which means that I have to lower the supply so then I can repeg the token and obtain once again the same value. If my token raises the value over the peg or over the stable coin value, then I can mint more tokens to once again bring it back to balance or the current price, okay? This is a blockchain development channel. And in this channel, we are going to be building our own stable coin. It's gonna be a fun ride. We're gonna be building the smart contracts. We are going to build or simulate the proof of reserve. And hopefully if I get a good vault service, I might even stake some assets on the vault and peg the stable coin to something. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Alrighty. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoy watching this amazing, amazing introduction into stable coins. And again, the sole purpose of this video is to prepare you because we're going to be working and we're going to be coding a full blown smart contract dedicated to a stable coin. Alrighty. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.